Ah, Inflate away. Amazing. So we begin with the Daily Nation before we get into that discussion on has Kenya's international relations diplomacy uh, done what? Has it come of age? Yes. Essentially. And have we used it to our benefit as a country within the region and globally? Okay. So Daily Nation front page story. And uh, Leila, for those... Uh, who are up in arms against the proposed taxes. They have some allies. And uh, MPs, World Bank, warned Ruto on tax. And these are the highlights as captured on the front page of the Daily Nation. Let me zoom in a little further. That should be clearer now. And a House committee and the World Bank have cautioned President William Ruto against his ambitious taxation plan warning that the country's economy is in bad shape and the new measures could sink more Kenyans into poverty. But the warning seems to contradict the lawmaker's recommendation to inflate Dr. Ruto's maiden budget by 80.7 billion shillings, a move that is likely to place an extra burden on taxpayers. Let me take that again. A health committee and the World Bank have cautioned President William Ruto against his ambitious taxation plan, warning that the country's economy is in bad shape and the new measures could sink more Kenyans into poverty. But the warning seems to contradict the lawmaker's recommendation to inflate Dr. Ruto's maiden budget by 80.7 billion shillings, a move that is likely to place an extra burden on taxpayers. Let's take a look at some of the numbers captured on the front page. Budget for the financial year 2023-2024, 3.679 trillion shillings, an increase of 295.7 billion shillings from the 2022-2023 financial year, which was at 3 trillion 384 recurrent expenditure is pegged at uh, 1.565 trillion shillings development expenditure 743.15 counties to receive 385.4 billion shillings in equitable revenue share interest on public debt 775.14 billion Principal debt redemption, 850.1 billion shillings. Targeted revenue collection, 2.571 trillion. They've uh, highlighted some of the pain yesterday. Uh, Michael, Lord Michael Hastings uh, had a quote that even the president requoted. And that was, uh, if you're feeling pain, you're alive. And uh, <laughs> what was the other one? If you're feeling pain, you're alive. Um, and then something about something if you're a human being. So, Daily Nation, I, I can't quite recall it. <laughs> Tweet at Obaros. I left to say yesterday at Leila Hatenje. At Leila Hatenje. So, tweet us to remind us what the second part of that was. But uh, the pain uh, that is uh, making you feel alive is 16% VAT on fuel, up from 8%, 3% housing levy. 15% withholding tax for digital content creators, although which the president called on the committee, relevant committee, to review and 15% uh, excise duty on mobile money transfer charges up from 12%. Okay, speaking of uh, the prayer breakfast, Leila, yes. here we go. An image of uh, Moses Butangula, uh, President William Ruto, Deputy President Tadigadi Gashagwa, and uh, Kimani Ishunwa, uh, the House leader. It was interesting uh, when uh, the Deputy President said, you know, people who went to Alliance, such as Julian Zamboko. Oh, goodness. <laughs> and Zena Buandati, they never let us forget it. And it's not like when the DP said, Alliance boys and girls. It is the Alliance. Oh, uh, sorry. School. I beg your pardon. And I went to the Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> just, just dropping it in there. Okay, let's take a look at uh, what else is on the front page. I see... There's an interesting story the, here. Right. Just, Which one? Just go back. Mm -hmm. um, 200 lorries carrying maize stuck in Namanga after Tanzania stops. Oh, that's a big issuing one. Issuing permits. Uh, some lorries, they say, have been stuck at the border on the Tanzania side for the past one week with traders uh, continuing huge losses do you want to look at that closer page 13 of uh, the daily nation let us see what that is about what page is this five should be somewhere here 10 11 12 13 here we go Layla, do you want to look at some of the details here in so are we going back to where we were a couple of years ago mm -hmm. or is this just one of those one of stories where um, um issues around uh, uh clearing of goods on the common border within between kenya and tanzania um is interesting because um they're saying um, at least 200 lorries. Some of those lorries have been stuck at the border uh, for at least a week. So yesterday, this was um, Tuesday, I, I believe. 
uh, some lorries remained parked at the yard more as more arrived by the hour. So um, the author doesn't really say who exactly um, is to blame between Kenya and Tanzania, but there's a quote here, and they say the Tanzanian authorities should have alerted the maize traders on time that they will not be issuing export permits. Um, I can see a, a further explanation here. Under new guidelines issued by Tanzania's permanent secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, which are to take effect from July the 1st, Kenyan traders wishing to import maize from the country will be required to open and register local offices in Dar es Salaam. Actually, uh, on Tuesday, I hosted uh, my all-female panel and Beatrice Alachi, it was in the paper then, as well, uh, spoke about it. Okay, so uh, Leila, can you take us through the uh, Taifa Leo? Let's look at what Taifa Leo is talking about. Ushuru, I think um, the big question this day, wabunge wa onyaruto, mswado wa fedha, mapato ya wa Kenya wengi kwa sasa ni madogo mno, kuweza kuhimili nyongeza kubwa ya ushuru ambao serikali inalenga, kukusanya kupitia mswado wa fedha wa mwaka lfumbili na ishirini na tatu, wabunge wa yonya serikali. Hii ni habari kuu ya siku vile vile, wameangazia taarifa nyingine ambazo wito wa Mariviano azimio wa kisusia maombi makenzi ya mkoso wa kindiki na uchambuzi wa fasihi uh, olive basically what uh, the swahili version of uh, the nmg publication talks about is similarly what has been talked about in the daily nation the, the uh, issue around uh, the okay. finance bill the taxes and uh, we know that next week kenyans will be listening keenly to President William Ruto's first budget, uh, which will be read uh, in Parliament by his CS Treasury. Um, and uh, many are looking at how the country's economic sphere, where we are at now, um, many are saying they can't afford to put three solid meals on the table. So they are uh, really urging the president to ease a bit uh, in terms of uh, how much we should be taxed. And uh, I had a conversation yesterday uh, in a different platform and people are actually saying the 16% VAT is quite high. Um, I'm not an economic expert, so I can't say it is, it is good or bad, but I think um, it's a conversation where probably even number one himself uh, should be really, really wanting to listen to. And given, Leila, you, you not only specialize in issues, international relations, diplomacy, and what is happening across the globe, you also deal with security issues. And then that's something I feel like in the last two weeks, there was a successful attempt to yank something from my car and a failed one because fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. Yes. But I feel like, will it translate? Okay, my question is not I feel like. <laughs> in my experience, yes. uh, this has never happened before in, in the four years I've been driving into the Nairobi Central Business District. So mm -hmm. will it translate? then to an increase in crime is the question is one of the questions I feel that we need to look at as we examine the cost of living to a certain extent yes and no um, because lack of jobs also uh, brings a lot of uncertainty amongst young people and uh, for them their first line of defense usually is if I can't get it the right way then I have to create a new way for myself and which is to take take and take uh, but then again, um, it shouldn't be the fact that uh, the situation in the country now allows for people to go into a state of anarchy. Uh, so it is a point, of course, number one himself again, uh, to look into the issue of ensuring that the jobs that he, he had promised to create for the young people are there for them. And also to secure this country because at the end of the day, he is the commander in chief of Kenya's defense forces and civilian security agencies as well. And so it is his job to secure us. And clearly you interact with the security agencies. You know, you refer to him as number one. I'm like, oh, God. All right, so uh, <laughs> I like to call him that sometimes. <laughs> that uh, is a tie failure. Should we look at the standard next? Uh, standard front page reads, prayer day, tax stock outshines unity call in spite of the theme of yesterday's prayers which were boycotted by the opposition being reconciliation with god and men president ruto took the opportunity to rail at those opposing the finance bill saying they are insincere there is an editorial comment there leila do you see it um, or top right top right Let's put an end to this madness in Shakahola. Time has come for Interior Cabinet Secretary Kithure Kendiki to offer the country a clear roadmap out of this in inglorious spectacle of bi-weekly launches of one thing or another at the Shakahola Ranch. The CS cannot dig up the ranch for eternity. 
issue pronouncements forever and move to the adjoining ranches, including the National Park in Hand for Graves. Yesterday, mm -hmm. the CS was announcing that this will be a sort of a memorial site in honor of those who have died in this particular park. How this is going to happen, I, I possibly he could have a better understanding. And and I was wondering, those who were with him yesterday when he, when he was making this announcement, uh, possibly they could have asked him how the state um, will undertake such a process because um, they've been digging for the last one month or so and they have 40 graves that they have identified. 18 have already been um, uh, dug up. Uh, and you said there are 20 more? People, 20, 20, you said there were 20 more. more. 18 more? Mm -hmm. 18 more. So they've, they've dug up 22. 18 more are left. And um, we are hope, hoping that uh, they f find no more people. But with the fact that 610 people are, missing. are still missing, then that's a big, big issue. Mm. Yeah. All right. Uh, I, I think, yeah, he said it on Tuesday. Yeah, you are correct there on that front. I support it, though. I think we have very short memories as Kenyans. So maybe a memorial would help us, uh, would help keep it top of mind. We have a memorial in such a one, but every time a lorry goes down, people forget that it actually exists there. And they still do the same thing that they happened uh, so many years ago. So Kenyans have short memory span memorial or no yes <laughs> all right let's take a look at the star stalled uh, projects kenyatta's team sunk 77 billion shillings payouts could have minted billionaires as uh, some were paid for no work done uh, that is on pages four and five of the star as the image there talks about as boycotting brutus was it really Ruto's national prayer breakfast uh or it was does this speak to the alleged capture of parliament uh, by the executive uh, I, I don't know how to say that because the prayer day is not something that um uh, started with uh, the ruto administration it started way in 1988 during the moi era and um it wasn't really as consistent as we've seen it since kibaki rejuvenated it uh, but um i think maybe they could just have said this was uh, the first prayer day under ruto's administration but I don't think it is his to claim. I know, right? Anyway, that's our opinion. There are those who will differ. People Daily, let's take a look at that. And uh, their headline reads, if you could scroll up, I don't wow. have a hard copy here. Is it difficult to it, 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 maneuver? It's, it, it's interesting Let because me. Oh, they've, um, they've picked the issue around Habitation? education. Mm -hmm. And uh, CS Machagu was in parliament yesterday answering questions. Mm -hmm. And he said that um, they will be pumping in 28 billion shillings uh, for schools. And remember, uh, the Daily Nation did a story this week and said that uh, most of the <laughs> schools are in danger of closing because of the funding issue. Uh -huh. um, um, yeah, basically, uh, other than... Um, the biggest winners in, in Ruto's budget and uh, now you can call it Ruto's budget because it is his first <laughs> as head of state. And it reminds me of, uh, was it Tuesday's uh, Tai Falio that I was talking about the money is owed for NHIF uh, in Wajami? Yes. Yeah, okay. So Mashogu says the 28 billion shillings for capitation, as you have said, uh, is due to schools tomorrow. Did I read that? Yes, he had said Friday, but I can't recall, was it this Friday or last Friday? He said this Friday, so we are hopeful that uh, by Monday, all will be well. Okay. All right, they have an image again of all smiles. Uh, Speaker of the National Assembly, William Bruto, uh, Gashagwa Kimani is Shunga of Alliance. Defending spending, President uses National Prayer Breakfast to talk up his tax measures. TSC said to get the largest share ahead of hiring of teachers. MPs increase their own allocation. Ha! Huh. Ah, <laughs> MPs increase their own allocation. We need to get into that one. Housing and irrigation also up. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Although uh, these allocations here look interesting. And then Leila, we can get into the East African and uh, engage our panelists. I'm sure they're like these ones. Uh, Teacher Service Commission has had its allocation increased by 1.2 shillings to bring its total provision to 323.8 billion shillings increment necessitated by planned employment of 35,000 teachers. Meanwhile, TVETs will get 28 billion shillings housing. Its budget allocation has been increased uh, from 1.29 billion shillings to its 
staggering 29.7 billion shillings, signaling state focus on its controversial housing plan. Roads, State Department for Roads has had its allocation ramped up by 166.8 billion shillings from 82.8 billion shillings in total. It will now get uh, 249.7 billion shillings. Here's the sticky one. National Assembly MPs, okay, one of the sticky ones in this case. MPs have also increased their own allocation by 2.2 billion shillings from 39 billion shillings in the initial estimates to 41.2 billion shillings in the revised one proposed by Ndindi Nyoro and his committee. And Irrigation, State Department of Water and Sanitation will be given 55.9 billion shillings up from 5.5 billion shillings which had been proposed in earlier estimates. I think this one, if the monies are like used as intended i think that one we can all get behind yes. we would need to interrogate further this particular number four all right uh, the east african should i reintroduce my panelists Please. because we will engage them on this one okay so uh, with us in studio we have professor peter kagwaja ceo africa policy institute dr mustafa uh, Ali, Chair Horn Institute for Strategic Studies, and uh, Nosongo Muliro, you actually texted me about this yesterday, <laughs> uh, Foreign Policy and Security Specialist, Global Center for Policy and Strategy. Thank you very much, Leila. Professor Boaz Mbaya, Retired Ambassador, Former Foreign Affairs, PS, and author. Okay, East African. Leila, I will. So they're going with the headline Ruto Plays West, Russia Ping Pong. Uh, looking to save a tanking economy, a weakening shilling, and deliver fertilizer and food to his hustlers. The Kenyan leader has found a dividend in a seeming cautious neutrality on the festering Ukraine crisis. Um, other than President Museveni, political capital for Museveni in the anti-gay law, and Rwanda wants M23 at Congo's peace talks. And Rwanda yesterday were making critical changes in their military and uh, they were moving some senior generals around and others were leaving the service. And everyone in East Africa was really looking at uh, what was going on in, Kib in Kigali mm. uh, with the president. But let me just uh, talk to the panelists. Good morning.